Well, community colleges are a key part of the education system. In Michigan, there are 28 schools with over 400,000 students. This morning, we're going to learn about one of those schools right here in Upper Michigan. It starts right now. From TV6, this is The Ryan Report. Now, here's your host, Don Ryan. Well, the community college we're focusing on this morning is Bay College. Joining us to provide some information about the school, founded in Delta County in 1962, is the president, Laura Coleman, who took over the reins of leadership there in 2006. Dr. Coleman, pleasure to welcome you to the Ryan Report. It's wonderful to be here. Good to have you. You know, um, I always like to have our audience get the chance to, to know our guests. So sure. Here's a real basic, simple question. Where did life begin for Laura Coleman? I was raised as a military brat, and I'm very okay. proud of that. So, uh, 10 states, two countries, uh, okay. following my father around uh, as an Air Force officer. Okay. And uh, so I had a really great life as a child uh, doing that, and uh, gained a great perspective on uh, equity and uh, accessibility for everyone uh, with those kinds of travels, because you got to see the oh, culture sure. across the country and across the world. And uh, so you've been here now for uh, 11, 11 years. years, yes. You're, you're kind of like a youper now. It, it, I, at least a trooper, but yeah, almost a youper. I d definitely can say you betcha. Okay. <laughs> um, maybe a little more about the governance. Um, people may not understand with community colleges, they are somewhat locally based, and, and you actually have a locally elected board of trustees. You know, this is one of the wonderful things about Michigan. Uh, we are a very, very independent uh, group within our community colleges, and so each community elects the board of trustees that are going to run uh, the college uh, in their area. And so we have seven board of trustee members who, are, uh, who rotate through and are elected um, every six years uh, okay. uh, to be on the, the board of trustees. And the culture of the board of trustees for Bay College is one that is uh, very collegial and they, they don't always agree on everything but they find ways to uh, work to a consensus and it's uh, a really healthy board and I say that because not all uh, community college or university boards are uh, healthy have a healthy culture okay. and Bay Colleges absolutely does have a, a very very healthy culture and they are focused on student success and uh, community success that is where uh, all of our focal points uh, lie. And I know you've probably always provided some services in Dickinson County but about 10 years ago, you took a big step to expand that service. Absolutely, and we've actually been in Dickinson County for 25 years, and we started off in a little tiny space and then grew and grew. And then in, uh, I wanna say 2004, uh, they, Dickinson County passed a millage uh, with our county commissioners uh, that they wanted to have Bay College come and be there. And Dr. and Mrs. Farnetti uh, gave us property there uh, to build a facility on, and then the state, uh, provided half of the funds to build the facility that we have down there. And uh, it's a really beautiful facility. We pri are pride ourselves with having that uh, area covered now in a really good way. And uh, we are giving that community the pieces and parts that they need. And it's a value partnership. And I assume this has had a positive impact on the school overall as well. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, it's, it's expanding the range that makes it easier for students to be able to attend Bay College. Okay. What do you see as the mission of Bay College? 100% student success. I mean, that is our major, major focal point is student success. And so we work very, very hard on finding ways to uh, help students develop the skill sets that they need to be successful in college. We want to increase the graduation rates of our students uh, for Delta County, Dickens County, and the whole of the UP. And uh, we want to contribute to the national initiative of making sure that 60% of the people in the country have got a degree, uh, certificate, associate's degree, bachelor's degree, or higher, uh, because we need to have a much more highly educated uh, community okay. uh, in the, in the uh, United States. A couple more quick facts about Bay. How many students do you have now? What, what's your enrollment approximately? We uh, are running somewhere around uh, 1,900. Okay. Yep. Is it going up or down? Well, it's been going down. You know, the unemployment uh, is the key to enrollment at, at all community colleges. And in fact, I've been surprised to find out that it also impacts the universities. But uh, when the unemployment rate goes down, 
then fewer people go to college. Where the unemployment rate is really high, then more people are, are going to college because they need to get some new skills so they can go out and find a new job. Okay. And how many people work at Bay? What's the approximate size of your staff there? That uh, depends upon how many students we have, and I say that because we have a, a large contingent of adjunct faculty, and so we also have a large number of full-time faculty. So uh, when we have larger numbers of students, then we have to offer more sections with adjunct faculty. But it runs somewhere between um, 150 and 250 people so, employed at Bay. So it is a big economic factor. It absolutely is. Yes, we have a big, we have a huge impact on the community. I want to talk specifically, and, and you touched on it a little bit, but. Um, truly, uh, today education is a key to economic development. When we come back, we'll talk about that. Okay. Back with more on the Ryan Report in just a couple of minutes. We're talking this morning with Dr. Laura Coleman, the president of uh, Bay College in uh, Escanaba and uh, Dickinson County as well. As I said before the break, there, there are many people today who feel that education is really the key to economic development. Are you seeing that from your perspective as well? A hundred percent. The jobs that have been created since the Great Recession, 65% uh, of those jobs that have been created require additional education after high school. and. In fact, in the next few years, 65% of all of the jobs in this country are going to be requiring some kind of education past high school. And so this is where community colleges make such a big, huge difference because we are much more local than all of the, the regional uh, universities and, and uh, key universities in the state. And we bring the education to our communities and get people those skill sets that they need in order to be able to go out and do jobs. It used to be, I mean, you think about, you and I can identify with this, you know, back in the 50s, you could open up a uh, car hood and you could figure out what was going on in that car. It wasn't tough, and I'm, I'm not a mechanic, so right. I don't know anything about it, but you could at least see the parts. Right. Today you open up that hood and you don't have any idea what's going on in there. Right. And it's all computerized and everything. So everything is significantly more complex than it used to be. And everybody needs uh, technology skills of some kind. And the other piece is that it used to be we could get our high school degree and then we didn't really have to spend any time learning anymore. And today, we have to keep our skill sets up every single solitary day. And people who take a step back and don't do that, 10 years of not improving their skill sets find themselves not relevant anymore because they don't have the latest s skills that they need to do their specific jobs. How, how do you make sure that the curriculum or the classes you're offering are going to meet the needs of today and at least the immediate future? We have advisory uh, committees for every one of our programs and we meet with them at least once a year, sometimes twice a year, and we ask those employers what is it that you need and here's our curriculum. Is there something that you need us to change in order to be able to better uh, serve what it is that you need? They also let us know if there are new uh, jobs that are going to be coming up that we need to develop whole brand new programs for, and they let us know that also. Uh, they let us know when we just need to make changes within programs. Um, an example I would give would be that we used to have an electronics program that didn't really satisfy the needs of the community, but Mechatronics, which combines a whole series of uh, pieces of information that are a little bit broader, they don't doesn't dive down in, but it gives people a broad knowledge, uh, was something that pe the community asked us for. We were able to develop that certificate and then take it on to a robotics uh, uh, associate's degree, which then transfers to Michigan Tech or to LSSU, and the students go in as juniors and get engineering degrees. Uh, but it's the having communication with not only the employers, but with the uh, four-year institutions and with the K through 12s to see what is the channel that we need to make in order to be able to make sure that our students are getting the education that they need to satisfy the needs of the community. I know through the economic development organizations I've been involved with, it's just so common to hear an employer say, I just can't find the qualified people. And in fact, in some cases, it actually holds companies back from growing. Yes, and that's one of the uh, big challenges that we have in that uh, we can be offering a class that is very relevant that students should be coming to because they can uh, complete the class, complete the degree, and make really, really good money, but people aren't interested in taking those classes. And so increasing the desire for people to 
want to come and do those programs is another uh, challenging uh, piece. And sometimes it's simply about how much money are they going to make when they get out, uh, whether or not they're interested in sitting right. in that classroom and doing that learning. And sometimes it's that their parents have said, I don't want you working in a manufacturing plant. Those are dirty old places. They're not dirty old places anymore. My goodness, they're all as clean as my house. Right. Uh, you know, so it just, it's, um, it's changing the culture of the uh, population so that when you say you need to go to college, it's not always about getting a bachelor's degree. It's not that bachelor's degrees are a bad thing. I, like you said, I've got my PhD. I, I right. love education. But get the degree that fits what it is that you want to do. Uh, get the associate degree that gives you the skills to be able to go out and get a really good job. And then if you decide you want to move up or change or whatever, then you can go ahead and go on and get a bachelor's degree that will satisfy the need of that. Uh, we have associate's degrees such as our water technology program that we have lines of people waiting to hire our graduates. And they come out and they're making forty-five dollars to $65,000 a year. That's with a two-year degree. Um, our nursing program, same kind of thing, where they, right. they come in and they get uh, degrees and they go out and make really, really good money. So uh, it's not always about getting a bachelor's degree. And so saying college means uh, various things. And we need people to uh, have a better understanding of that. One, one of the things that one of the projects I know you've been working on has to do with open access to books. Tell me more about that. You know, it's the cost of books has just gotten completely out of control. We had students who were paying more for books than they were for their education. And so we joined a national initiative to go to open access resources, the OER project. And we have developed an entire degree, an Associate of Arts degree, that transfers to any of the universities and they can go on and get their bachelor's degree, where they can use open access books, most times not pay any money at all for them. They're available to read on your Kindle um, or your iPad. Or you can buy a book, but if you buy the book, it will cost you less than $40 instead of costing you $350. Okay. And so this is one way that we are addressing the need to reduce the cost of education. It only costs $4,500 to come to Bay in a year to complete a, your degree. And, but then if you have to add on another 1000 or $2,000 to buy books, then right. you've got a higher cost. So this is reducing that cost substantially, and it's something that we're very, very proud of. Okay. We'll talk some more about Bay College in just a couple of minutes. Back okay. with more after we take this break. And again, this morning we're talking with Dr. Laura Coleman, Bay College President, learning more about Bay College. One of the uh, interesting things you're getting involved with is athletics. And uh, I think there may have been some athletics in the past, but uh, it's coming back to Bay. There you go. Yeah, they actually had athletics uh, for a few years back before Title IX, and when Title IX came out, they decided to stop having athletics. And when I arrived 11 years ago, it wasn't a month or two into my tenure that I started getting phone calls about, why don't you have athletics at Bay College? And it was a hard question for me to answer because my daughter and son-in-law actually were college athletes, so I know the absolute value of having athletics be a part of uh, the student experience. And when you look at the whole person that we are, we definitely need to expand our knowledge base, so that's the academic side of a triangle. Uh, then you have the arts, and we all need to be exposed to arts, and that is something that helps us with our creative minds and, and helps us to expand the way we think. And then you have athletics, which is our physical form that needs to be uh, encouraged to expand and, and, and be exercised. So having athletics rounds out what we do at Bay College, because we have a, a great quality academics, uh, we have wonderful art all over our campus. We're really thrilled with that. So having athletics uh, is really important. And the board, a few years ago, decided that they wanted to have athletics and that it was a really good space for us to go and recruit in because it was a pocket of students that we were losing to other schools and we were not providing access to local athletes. And you're going to be into uh, basketball and cross country, I believe, for Absolutely. both men and women. Absolutely, yes. And it's going very, very well. We hired the right people to be coaches and athletic director, and uh, they're out there recruiting like crazy. We've gotten some of the top uh, basketball players in the state, uh, certainly in the UP, and uh, we're really, really quite thrilled with the results. And they'll be the Bay College Norse, as I understand. The Bay College Norse, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Well, the um, wh one other, maybe a couple of questions about uh, community colleges in general. You're, you're under certain limitations from the state as to what you can do, right? You can't, for example, you're limited as far as 
uh, any community college um, providing a bachelor's degree. Yes, uh, we've had quite the battle uh, down in Lansing uh, with the university presidents about us offering any kind of baccalaureate degree. And we are not interested in becoming universities. We want to provide people in our community with the degrees that they need. And so there are five uh, baccalaureate degrees that can be offered at different community colleges. But the one that we really want and that we really need and that the state needs is for us to be able to offer the BSN. And I say that because it's going to be the required degree for hospitals for nurses. And uh, right now, you know, the students have to uh, move, travel long distances, or take online classes in order to be able to get their BSN. And the community colleges provide over half of the nurses in this state. Okay. Uh, and that's across the country. And so, our expenses for nursing, we get all the tough, most expensive part in the first two years because we do all the clinicals, which requires to have one faculty to eight students, which is a high expense. And the last two years are about theory. And so then you're sitting in a classroom with one faculty and 30 students. So it's a lot more uh, monetarily uh, feasible right. to do right. it. And so we do that in the, the tough part the first two years the universities do that cost, high cost factor over all four years. And so for them to go into actually educating all of those nursing students, they would have to double their cost factors and double what it is that they're doing. Whereas for us, it's, a, it's an add-on that would be fairly simple and would be not extremely cost uh, prohibitive. And so it just makes a whole lot of sense for the state for us to be able to do that. But so far, uh, the university presidents are winning on this one. So, okay. yeah. we, have, we have only a minute left. Uh, what about the state's support of community colleges? In fact, the budget is just being adopted now. Yeah. What the, what's the outlook? Uh, well, we're going to get about a 1.5% increase, um, which we're happy with. But the interesting piece is that in 2000, uh, we got only 7% less than what we're going to be getting right now. So you think about that over a 15 year period, we have only increased how much we're getting from the state by 7%. So the net result of that is instead of back in 2000, 52% uh, of the cost of going to community colleges was, was offset by the state. Today it's only 33%. And so what that means is, is that the students are having to pick up a larger uh, part of that cost to go to uh, school. And so uh, back in 2000, uh, only the, the students paid 32% of okay. the cost of, of uh, attending, and today they pay 43%. We don't have uh, time to go into detail, but I know that uh, you have a foundation, you offer scholarships. We do. Over $350,000 a year we give out in scholarships. I know you also have a Bay College golf outing coming up later in July, that, which helps that process. A hundred percent. And so go on to our website www.baycollege.edu and you can get registered for the uh, golf outing. It's a great event. It happens at the uh, Escanaba Country Club and uh, people who come have a great time. Okay, thanks for coming in this morning and Thank you very much. sharing information about Bay College. You betcha. I'll be back with some other thoughts for you in just a couple of minutes. You know, life gives us lessons every day, and that adage certainly applies in the world of business. There was a good learning opportunity recently that I think is worth sharing. It has to do with how a business responded to a very negative situation. The business in question is called Tick Pick, a company based in New York that's an online seller of tickets for everything from Major League Baseball games to concert appearances by major entertainers. The company's problems began when they published a map of the United States that did not include Upper Michigan. The whole U.S. was there, except for the U.P. Now, this is not the first time that's happened. Time Magazine did it once. Even the Weather Channel, which really should know geography, did it. There have been other instances as well. We've kind of gotten used to it. But it's what the company did next that really put them in hot water. Instead of an apology or a simple statement saying the company was looking into it, a customer support re a person responded, we got the important part of Michigan. Isn't that good enough? Oh, fighting words for youpers. And as other comments came in to the Trick Pick website, they responded, we're sure the Upper Peninsula of Michigan is a lovely place to live, and I assure you we didn't intentionally leave it off the map, but seriously, 
It's just a bunch of forests. Well, as reaction began to pour in, TickPick's co-CEO and co-founder, Brett Goldberg, stepped forward to make things right. Goldberg said, to say one of our customer support team members mishandled the entire outreach improperly would be an understatement. When I was shown the comments that one of our representatives wrote, I was shocked and appalled as well. Yes, this person thought they were being funny, but they were not. Goldberg offered a complete detailed apology, but he took it a step further. He got on an airplane, flew to Marquette, and offered to buy a beer for anyone who showed up to meet him at Black Rock's Brewery. Hundreds showed up that night. And one of the key parts of this story is that it all happened in one day. I tell you this story today to point out how simple it can be to handle many public relations fiascos. Say you're sorry, make it right, and say it like you mean it. We can compare the actions of the TickPick's CEO with the United Airlines CEO who reacted when the airline manhandled one of their customers in removing him from a flight. First, the CEO placed the blame on the passenger, but backed down in stages and eventually apologized and took responsibility. Too little, too late. So, although I never met him, I would like to nominate Brett Goldberg for my CEO Hall of Fame. He saw a problem and dealt with it, and his company is better off because of it. The truth is, his company could have survived without us, but he didn't treat it that way. I'll be back in a minute. Well, education is a key to our future. I'm pleased we could have Bay College President Dr. Laura Coleman with us this morning to talk about not only Bay, but also taking a broader look at what's happening as we strive to meet the needs of students today. This is a good time to remind you that for anyone who missed the show or would like to see it again, it will be available on the internet at UpperMichiganSource.com. Also find the latest news at the same address anytime. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. Hope we can see you again right here next Sunday morning.